we'll actually set up a separate landing page where we work with a number of different um, associations or organizations and we've got a few kind of industry specific um, uh, websites basically at this point or domains that we have that we can direct people to that allow them to kind of engage with some of our content we've got um, you know downloadable things on there uh, you know my books we've got the uh, you know some some interviews I've done on on podcasts um, and uh, and then some information about specialty programs and this and that or whatever um, but that's one thing that I find that it really it it's it's supporting that message it's it's very strategic but yet it's also kind of getting them to like opt into your sales process and so now it's like there's times where, depending on how we're engaging with this this client or this prospect, they may be three quarters of the way through the sales process before we've had even been on the phone. Every employee benefits broker and industry partner dreams of achieving great things. The bad news is that success doesn't come easy. The good news is that you don't have to do it alone. Welcome to the Benefits Sales Pro Show. I am your host, Ryan James Miller, and my goal is to engage industry professionals who have found success and are willing to share it with others. So give us 15 minutes and hear how today's guest has achieved great things, so you can too. All right, what up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the show. We are flying through some great conversations uh, with uh, successful agency owners and sales professionals in the employee benefits space with the whole goal of allowing you to grab one nugget or maybe 12 minutes, 15 minutes of great content around how to be a better sales professional. Because whether you own the agency or you sell for the agency, you have sales responsibility, you gotta go out there and generate revenue. So that's what we're here to help you do today. And with that, I have Chris Wolpert. He is the founder of GBS Group Benefit Solutions. He's up in the Pacific Northwest. Chris and I go way back. We're good buds. I've watched him to continue to build his business. He's done a great job doing that. And so uh, he's here today to share some of those nuggets with you. But for the moment, Chris, what's up, dude? Welcome. What's up, Ryan? Well, thank you. I, I'm so pleased to be on here today and have a chance to speak to your audience. And uh, hopefully I'll hit the center of that bullseye for you. That's they good. Can take not, another not, away. Yeah, not for me, for them. If not, if it doesn't work, they're just going to they're going to message you and be like, dude, that was crap. That, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so a uh, first kind of like an observational question that I have is when I say sales in the employee benefits realm or industry, what kind of comes to mind? Well, what comes to mind for me when you're talking about sales specifically within employee benefits um, you know, you, you kind of, my head goes one of two places, either you think health insurance, because that's where a ton of premium dollars go for every individual that's employed at, at a, at a private employer or at any organization across this country, or my other head go, but the other side of my head goes to, uh, the, the ancillary benefits, the, the non-medical benefits and specifically, uh, the carrier with the duck, right? I think that's what everybody associates when you think of sales and employee benefits, um, so it kind of goes to one of those two directions for me. I, I, I love that because I've asked that opening question a few different ways, but I, what I think is so great is we have to think about how our customers or prospective customers are thinking about us or thinking of us. And it's interesting because that's the vein that they're often thinking in, even when they're in the world of buying benefits, that's, that's kind of the place their head goes. And so that's, that's something that you have to learn to address or overcome as you step into that environment. Okay, yeah. so um, you, you've been at this for quite a few years, uh, uh, particularly as the business owner. So what, what big mistakes do you see your peers making uh, in the industry that you feel are hindering their ability or hurting their ability to generate revenue? 100%. It, the, it's an easy answer. And that is that they are they're selling features and benefits. They're mm -hmm. selling the features and benefits of an insurance policy which is the same thing that every business owner, every prospect, every client has heard over and over and over for decades at this point. Um, but when you're selling based on, you know, features and benefits of a, of a product like that, you're not doing any kind of high level consulting. You're not really um, thinking strategically. And, uh, and so I think that's where, and I, look, I, I'm guilty of this, right? I did this for many years myself. And so that's why I can speak from experience saying that I was selling 
features and benefits of an insurance policy, not the strategy, not the end result, not the destination. Um, and, and so that's where we made that pivot. And it's, it's, been, it's been much better since then. Yeah, I, I, I think that that was articulated really well too, because um, for most of us, when we got into sales, uh, we engaged in some type of sales training, not yeah. in business consulting education and training. And so we didn't, uh, most people probably even still today don't really understand how the business works, like what the different levers do, uh, what different departments are responsible for. And so if they don't have an understanding for that, then the only thing they can really do is sell what they know, which is their product and service or feature and benefit. Right. And, and, and hoping you're that you're more charming than the person that's in there now. <laughs> which in the benefits world, what that really turns into who has the sharpest pencil and who is willing to refine their spreadsheet enough uh, to get just a quarter of a percentage lower to make it look like you're doing a better job. And then maybe you can get an opportunity to win that business, right? Exactly. Yep, exactly. Spot on. So for you, for you specifically, so that's kind of a general challenge. And I know you said that you stepped into that a, a time or two yourself, but um, what, what is one of the bigger challenges you have faced uh, in generating revenue and how did you overcome that uh, to, to get to where you are today? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Well, you know, um, I, GBS is, is something that I founded back in, in 2016. Um, I had a couple of years experience at that point. Um, specifically in benefits, and before that was working as a financial advisor. So uh, one of the things that I think what really helped me and uh, what really has differentiated us was when I, I really started to focus on our marketing and, mm. and specifically the messaging around that, because you're right, there, there are, you know, people have a bunch of, they've kind of got this loaded idea or they've got a preconceived notion of what you do. And I even find this now, even when I call up somebody and say, hey, look, our mission here at GBS is to modernize healthcare by eliminating your employees out of pocket expenses while simultaneously guiding them to the highest quality healthcare. They're like, oh, oh, so you're a broker and you would want to come in and replace our broker. And it's like, well, time out, hold on, wait a minute. Like, no, that's not what we want to do. I, that's just our messaging. So that is typically something that will open the door for us. But then what I find is that it's more about getting them to understand that there is something more than just having your, your, having your plan shopped each year, mm -hmm. right? And you get a spreadsheet of a bunch of, of options. Uh, it's more important, I think, to lead with that message. And then that way, look, if there's somebody who just wants to change from one carrier to another, to another, to another, um, and just keep moving carriers each year, and that's their, that's their strategy, then that's great, but I'm not. I'm not. You're going to be your guy, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to eliminate deductibles and copays and kind of move along this glide path towards cost containment, where we do have the ability to eliminate some of those um, uh, those those high cost claims, um, we have the ability to shift some of those costs to contain some of those costs, and ultimately have a strategic discussion around that variable cost, which is your claims. Um, that's really the way that you're going to be able to, to have that conversation and that you're going to be able to, to affect some sort of change of that organization and pick them up as a client uh, and then have them not just be a client who renews the same carrier every few years and then pivots, but somebody who's really excited about some of the new solutions and strategies that you bring each and every year and then let them opt in or allow them to decide if they want to crawl, walk or run towards, uh, towards this cost containment notion and, and that type of thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that that's super duper good. You know, uh, um, people are really afraid to call themselves salespeople because it's such a bad word, you know, it's like associated with used car salespeople and blah, 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 whatever, you know, there's kind of like just the, 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 the bad word association, but I think that there's a bad word association with broker. And I know that a lot of insurance brokers or employee benefits brokers have tried to, to pivot out of that too, because, you know, as a broker, 
I mean, in reality, a broker is just a glorified middleman. You know, that, 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 that's kind of all that they are, which, which goes back to your earlier point, which is I am here to be a consultant. I'm here to understand what your business problems are. I'm here to help you identify the right solutions. And then I like what you said there. I used to have a client actually in the same industry. He, he runs a business back on the East Coast and he uses Crawl Walk Run all the time for his own employees, his own business, for his clients too. And I love that because you give people the opportunity to do what's right for them as you're moving them along this path, ultimately towards the best solution possible that you know is out there, but you can't always do that all at once. So I love that you said that. And I love that you've learned that over time. Obviously, it's not just something that you grasped from day one. So what, yeah. um, so we talk a little bit about challenges. So, so how about two, and maybe you answer this similarly to what you just said, but so what is one sales tactic or strategy that you have used that has allowed you to be more successful, maybe even in present day where dynamically the industry has changed even since 16, when you started even just GBS, things have changed so much. And I mean, in the last two years, so much. And so what's something that you've adopted today without totally giving away all your secrets uh, that you are using that that's allowing you to be successful? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, well, one of the things I found is, is a, is a landing page. So like for our clients, um, you know, now, not all of them have this, but, but we do this in a lot of cases. It's like abccompanybenefits.com. We'll actually set up a separate landing page where we work with a number of different um, associations or organizations, and we've got a few kind of industry specific um, uh, websites basically at this point or domains that we have that we can direct people to that allow them to kind of engage with some of our content. We've got, um, you know, downloadable things on there, uh, you know, my books, we've got the, uh, you know, some, some interviews I've done on, on podcasts mm. um, and, uh, and then some information about specialty programs and this and that or whatever. Um, but that's one thing that I find that it really, it, it's, it's supporting that message. It's, it's very strategic, but yet it's also kind of getting them to like opt into your sales process. And so now it's like, there's times where it, depending on how we're engaging with this, this client or this prospect, they may be three quarters of the way through the sales process before we've had even been on the phone. We may already have um, underwriting started and we may have, you know, some things already in place that it really shortens our runway versus like in the back in the day where it was like all just basically pitching meetings to talk about features and benefits where that was the pitch was the meeting. And then you had to convince them to take that next step and this and that. Whereas now it's like, you kind of get them used to what your messaging is. It's all consistent. And then they kind of opt in and, and or weed themselves out, which is just as well, because you can't work with everybody. You can't please everybody. And, and not everybody is going to be a right fit. So but if you can get those folks that are already maybe two thirds or three quarters of the way there, um, then that becomes, it's a lot less resistant to, to close the sale. And um, it's, it's that much easier to, to then onboard them because they've already, they already understand some of the components of what's going to be required to, uh, to work with us and, and, uh, um, and go from there. So. I, I love that. I think that's such a great idea because we are trying to consistently add value to put the right resources, the right content, the right information in front of them to educate them on uh, better ways to do to to, to do uh, healthcare, uh, to do benefits, also to indoctrinate them kind of into our process, into our way of thinking. And so I love the fact that you've created a medium that allows them to opt into that, as you kept saying, which is so wonderful because then it does prevent you from just aimlessly, and I do say aimlessly on purpose, aimlessly pursuing everybody on a cold list in hopes that at some point, somebody may actually tell you that their burning is building down and you happen to have the right hose to put out the fire. So I think that's great. Um, okay. So final question that I, that I like to ask everybody is, um, uh, if you could turn back to your younger self, uh, that was just stepping into this industry, uh, what is one piece of advice you would have given you, uh, to be more successful earlier? And you can't say that you would have had them doing Friday fables way back then. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, don't do it, man. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, no, that I love that. I love that question. It's gosh, you know, like what, what, what could I, what could I tell my younger self that doesn't have this, uh, this level of experience now? Um, I, I think the thing for me would be, uh, you know, 
part, kind of what we were talking about before we started recording here, which is be patient. Um, you know, it, this is not going to come all at once. This is a is an industry that has a long sales cycle. Um, it's a very relationship based kind of business, even though as consultants, obviously, we're looking to disrupt some of that. But no, I think really just be patient, you know, um, and, and part of that too, just kind of give a background on, on my experience. I, 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 I was like on trajectory for the moon out of the gate. I mean, my, my first six months um, was, I, I, that was the best point I had in, in my career, really, in wow. terms of closing new business. Yeah. And there was a number of factors that, that played into that. Um, but I just kind of, you know, I was, I was young and dumb. I'm now, I'm still young, but maybe not as young, um, <laughs> not as young, dumb, not as dumb, but, <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it was one of these things that you just kind of think, oh, well, it's always going to be this way. It's always going to be this easy to keep picking up new business and do it, you know, doing what I was doing. Um, and that was not the case. And I did come back, you know, crashing back down to earth and, mm. um, have since rebounded from that too. So, but I think there's, um, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a valuable experience in all that. And so yeah. now we have certainly over the last, um, year or two now been back on that same trajectory. Um, I do know that there, there is, there are things wrong with growing too fast, mm -hmm. um, when you're not ready to do that. And, and the other thing is too, is that it's not going to last. And so you need to prepare for when you do bring on all this business, you've got to be able to service it effectively. You've got to be able to follow through on your value proposition and the promises that you made. Um, and then you need to be able to continue to, to grow and, and scale. And so I think that I've seen that happen with a lot of early businesses. They get some success early on and, and, uh, and then come back down to earth and then start to figure out where they went wrong. And, and so I think that's something that, um, you know, you, you have to somewhat embrace and, and you, you have to be patient and you have to, you know, if you're gonna be willing to take those high highs you've got to be willing to withstand those low lows um, and get yourself back out of the valley and start climbing up the mountain again. Yeah, that's good, man. All right. It's a great way to land the plane. Um, uh, for you guys out there listening, uh, Chris is a, a great follow on LinkedIn. A lot of great content that is industry relevant. So definitely stuff like this. He does the Friday Fable pretty much every Friday. If you don't know what that is, go to, go to his LinkedIn profile, make sure you connect with him, check that out. Uh, and uh, Chris has contributed to or written some books, which is really cool. Uh, but my favorite, just because of the uniqueness to it, and I don't plug a lot of stuff on this show specifically. Yeah, it's in, it's in the background up there, but it's called Hit Zero, uh, the quest to make healthcare costs affordable. Is that what it is? The, health, the, the quest to make the, the health, the, Oh my gosh, you put me on the spot now, Ryan. The quest to make healthcare a controllable cost. There you is go. The subtitle. Yeah. So, so check that <laughs> out. Super cool. I bought a copy. I think it's just it's such a, a fun and cool cool thing to do. Very creative. Uh, so make sure you connect with him. His contact information will be in the show notes. Chris, thank you so much uh, for joining. Always great to catch up and have this conversation. Um, and for you guys out there too, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, recommendations for future guests got a question about a topic that we've talked about, go to the benefitssalespro.com or you can reach out to and connect with me. I'm happy to listen to whatever you got to say. Make sure as you do everything else. You're out there smashing those goals the best way that you can. Thanks guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Benefits Sales Pro Show. Please make sure to like this episode, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. I also invite you to check out thebenefitssalespro.com. We have created a digital platform that includes both live and on-demand video trainings, quick tips, and a multitude of branding, prospecting, and selling resources that are downloadable for you today. So visit www.thebenefitssalespro.com and grab a free copy of the High Performance Sales Playbook while you're there.